Hello and welcome to another Modular Encounter Systems tutorial video. In this video we're going to be going over how to create a planetary installation encounter. So these encounters are the uh, static stations that you find as you explore the surface of the planet. And we're going to be covering the ins and outs of how to get that set up. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that our station meets a few key requirements here. Really the big thing is that it has a um, a cockpit or a remote control of some sort. In this case, I did stick a remote control on the back of it here before I started recording, so that's what we'll uh, go with for that. And the other thing is we just want to make sure it has a suitable name, not something like Static Grid 1497 or something silly like that. So, in this case, I did just name it Test Station, so that will do for our purposes here. So we're good to go on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use control C while looking at it, make a copy, and then we can just hit escape. We're going to hit F11, and we're going to do export clipboard to file. There we go, we can see that's been saved. So, we are going to do Windows key R, and we're going to go to the percent app data percent folder, should bring us in here, and we're going to go to space engineers. Then we're going to go into the mods folder and we're going to create a new folder in here called example station. There we go. In here we're going to create a folder called data and in here we're going to create a folder called prefabs. All right, then we're going to go back to the space engineers root folder here. We're going to go into export and we're going to take this test station and we're going to cut this back into mods, back into example station, data, hop into the prefabs folder, paste that in here, then we'll go back. So we've got all of that where we want it. Now we have to grab the uh, spawn group template file. So to get that we're going to go back to the um, modular encounter systems uh, workshop page. We go down towards the bottom. Uh, here you'll find the link to the uh, github wiki. So we'll click on that. And from here, we're going to scroll down until we find the template and example files. We're going to go to spawngroup.sbc. And then over here, we're going to click on raw. Here we go. And from here, we're going to say save page as. And we're just going to save it to the desktop. We're going to change this from text document to all files. And then we're going to hit save. There we go. So then we're going to Go look for that on our desktop. Um, now one thing I noticed here is it looks like it saved itself as a text document instead of an SBC file, even though it says it's ending in SBC. So let's go ahead and just drag this back to our mods example station data folder. We'll paste it right here beside our prefabs folder. But that has me concerned, so we're going to check something. What we're going to do, in Windows we can click on View up here. And then we can go to File Name Extensions, and ah, sure enough, for some reason it did save it as a text file. So we can fix that just by renaming it, and we can just chop that off so it's just spawn group mes.sbc. Windows will give us a little warning, we can just say yes, and there, that's where we want that to be. Then after we're done, we can click on File Name Extensions up here to hide those again, and we're all good on that. So now that we've got our spawn group, let's go ahead and open that up. We're going to go to edit with notepad plus plus. Here we go. And we're going to give this a name. We're just going to call this um, example stations spawn. Why not? All right. For most of these tags, we're going to leave them false. Um, like all these cargo ship ones, it's not a cargo ship we're dealing with, so it doesn't make sense to change those. Really, the only one we're going to focus on is this uh, planetary installation. We're going to change that to true. All right, faction will leave as space pirate, replenish, we'll leave that as it is, rival AI, all that, not worried about it. All right, so we're going to come down here, and for our prefab subtype ID, we're going to go back into the folders, back into our prefabs folder here, and we're going to grab this name and copy it. We're not going to copy the .sbc though, just the, just the name. Come back in here, and we're going to replace your prefab name here with test station. So that's about got everything that we need here, so we're going to go back in game, and we're going to go back to our main menu. 
I'm gonna go to load game, click on our world, edit settings, go into mods, and we're actually gonna add the example station here. Also make sure you have the modular encounter system mod loaded as well. If you remember from the last video, I didn't have that in there and that caused us to have an extra reload we didn't need. So we'll hit okay, okay here again, and load up world. And once it's loaded up, we're going to check to see if it's an eligible spawn. And if so, we'll do a test spawn. Here we go. So we're back in. We're going to do oh, enter to open up the chat panel. We do slash capital M-E-S dot G-E-S-A-P. And that acronym stands for Get Eligible Spawns at Position, which is a bit of a mouthful to type out. That's why I created an alternate abbreviated tag for... Yeah, quick access. So, now that we've got those sent to clipboard, we're gonna go back into our Notepad++. We're just gonna open up a new page real quick, paste everything in. So right at the bottom here, we can actually see we do have the Planetary Installation Eligible Spawn section here, and that is the name of the station that we created, so it looks like that is ready to go. So, now what we can do is come back here, hit Enter, do capital M-E-S dot S-P-I, Spawn Planetary Installation. Hit enter, and oh, we can see on our HUD it did create something way over there. Let's check it out in Spectator. All right, so it did spawn, although right off the bat you're probably noticing there's something kind of unusual about this. Specifically that it's a little deeper underground than it probably should be. So, to fix this, what we actually have to do is we have to specify a an offset of sorts in the spawn group file. Um, you have to do this with pretty much every single station. MES doesn't really know how to automatically detect what sort of spawn offset should be used because every station is unique. So, what we're going to do to calculate this is, uh, probably one of the easiest ways, is to use spectator and just check out how many blocks deep underground it is or or above ground if it spawns too high but in this case here we're gonna see so let's see one two three so it's about three blocks underground so we're gonna use a an offset of 7.5 now the reason I've got that number 7.5 is because each large grid block is 2.5 meters in in height or length or width, whichever it happens to be. It's a 2.5. So 2.5 times three, that's where we get our 7.5 that we're gonna use in our offset. So let's go back to our spawn group. Here we go. So right here, there's this position section. Uh, right now it's all at zero. The X axis, that goes left and right. Z goes forward and backwards. And Y goes up and down. So to move it up, we actually want to give it a positive value, so 7.5. If you had to move it down, you would just change that to a negative value. So we're going to save that, return to game, do a quick reload. And for those who don't know, the uh, the quick reload, um, all you have to do is hit the F5 key, and that'll give you that option so you don't have to go back to the main menu, load up the game again, and all that jazz. Here we go, we're back in. So we will use our same spawn command again. You can see that it spawned way the heck out there. In the spectator and see if things are a bit different this time. Here we go, that's looking a lot better. So now it's a reasonable distance above ground and players should be able to interact with that as intended. Now one little tip I do have when you're designing your stations is to make sure that they have maybe about a two or three block foundation. And the reason I say that is, um, while MES is pretty decent at finding flat ground, it's also not perfect. So sometimes if you have um, too thin of a foundation, you might get parts of the terrain that are kind of clipping into the floor and things like that. It might, might seem a little unsightly, so it's a, definitely a good idea to make sure you have a couple blocks or keep it on stilts or pillars or whatever works for you. But uh, just wanted to throw that in there for while you're designing your stations. But that uh, that about covers everything that we have to go over in this video. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to um, get back to you when I can. All right. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.